Now, crimes are sadly committed in every jurisdiction, and domestic legal orders punish many of them. So why do we need to create a supplementary, a different uh, category of international crimes? Firstly, there's the moral revulsion of the world that needs to be expressed through something different than simply domestic criminal offenses. The crimes at hand are so severe that they need and deserve a standing or an assessment superior to that of one state. Essentially, this is the role of the international community. Secondly, there is essentially a different scope of protected interests. It's not just the requirement to protect the interest of an individual, but groups as a whole need to be protected, such as with genocide, when there is an attempt to destroy a group as such, or with crimes against humanity, when there is a widespread and systematic attack against a group. As a consequence, this also justifies the intervention of the international community. Thirdly, is the scale of the atrocities that has to be reflected by a different type of offense. Uh, crimes against humanity, war crimes and genocide are not generally committed against one or two people but against whole groups and whole classes of people. They therefore include an element of scale which definitions under international law, international criminal offenses, are better capable of reflecting than domestic crimes. Uh, murder as a crime against humanity is more reflective of exactly what the crime was that was committed than a domestic offence of murder. And fourthly, and this is specifically relates to war crimes, is because of the specificity of circumstances where rules are made to apply, essentially during warfare. War crimes do not occur during peacetime in domestic jurisdictions. They occur during, as we'll discuss later on, times of armed conflict, whether the armed conflict is national or international, or internal or international. However, despite these differences, don't be completely fooled. In many ways, the crimes are essentially similar and comparable to domestic crimes. A crime is often a crime under domestic and international law simultaneously. Uh, for example, murder as a war crime uh, is also punishable as murder as a domestic offence. And at certain international tribunals, such as the Special Tribunal for Lebanon, uh, sorry, the Special Court for Sierra Leone or the Extraordinary Chambers in Cambodia, the same crime, or the same act, has been punished both as a domestic criminal offence as well as an international criminal offence. Similarly, a crime can also, sorry, or an act, can also amount to different international crimes. The same act can constitute a crime against humanity and a war crime simultaneously. For example, torture, rape and murder can all amount to both a crime against humanity and a war crime. However, the preference for prosecuting uh, an offence as a war crime rather than a domestic offence is generally because of other factors such as the pressure and expectation of the victims. Uh, and to, as I mentioned earlier, to reflect the overall scale and nature of the crimes. It also has the possibility of overcoming certain domestic technical legal rules which might prevent prosecution as a domestic criminal offence. As a consequence, uh, it may be possible to prosecute somebody for a crime against humanity or a war crime 25 or 30 years after the offence, whereas a domestic statute of limitations may prohibit such a prosecution. Uh, as an example, in Cambodia, there was a statute of limitations for certain offences that, that occurred in 1975 to 1979. When they were prosecuted 30 years later, 
there was an issue as to whether it was still possible to prosecute them for those domestic offenses. By prosecuting them for war crimes, when no statute of limitations applied, this avoided the problem. Similarly, international crimes have the advantage of being able to circumvent amnesties or domestic immunities which may prohibit prosecution. Uh, it is a, a, a well-known action in domestic uh, criminal jurisdictions to grant an amnesty for certain crimes at the end of a, a certain period or a, a turbulent period. Uh, these amnesties may well be valid vis-a-vis -vis any domestic criminal jurisdiction, domestic criminal prosecution, but if that person is being prosecuted for an international crime, they are generally held not to be valid. Uh, as one example, uh, at the end of the civil war in Sierra Leone, there was an amnesty signed between the rebel leaders and the government and mediated and organized by the United Nations. And in that agreement, there was an amnesty for certain persons who were alleged to have committed crimes. And when they were subsequently prosecuted several years later, they obviously invoked the, uh, the amnesty to prevent their prosecution. However, it was held by the jurisdiction, by the court prosecuting them, that such an amnesty agreement wasn't valid for those international crimes. And just finally, the other reason for, pre for preferring to prosecute a crime as an international crime is that it's to distinguish between the crimes of the leaders and those of the foot soldiers. In many uh, situations where war crimes are alleged to have, uh, have been committed, it tends to be the leaders who may well have initiated and been largely responsible for the commission of those crimes, but people several rungs down the ladder, down the hierarchy, who actually were the ones for, responsible for physically carrying it out. So by prosecuting the leaders for international crimes, you distinguish their level of greater responsibility. 